What's up guys, my name is Eduardo and today's video I'm going to settle the debate between which is better, training with body weight or training with weights. Now before you assume my answer and before I give you my opinion, you need to know a little bit more about my background. I'm pretty proficient with both. I've been training with body weight and with weights, specifically the kettlebell, for a very long time. But I do have some decent feats of strength when it comes to the barbell compared to the average person. I've been able to do a three times body weight deadlift, a two times body weight back squat, a body weight military press, a Turkish get up with 115 pounds, all using a barbell. And with the kettlebell, I've been able to do a Turkish get up with 48 kilograms, a pistol squat with 48 kilograms, a pull up with 48 kilograms, a military press with half my body weight on one hand. And with body weight, I've been able to do pretty cool stuff like straddle planche, handstand push ups, iron cross, muscle ups, and some pretty cool body lever things like back levers, front levers, and human flags. The reason I bring that up is to let you guys know that I have quite a bit of experience with all of these modalities and I've seen benefits from all of them. So let's break this down and figure out why I was able to accomplish all of these feats of strength in modalities that are completely different. I think the 10,000 hour rule plays a huge part here. If you haven't heard of that rule, it basically says, and I'm paraphrasing, it takes 10,000 hours of practice to achieve mastery at something. And I mean, by no means am I a master, I'm no Olympic gymnast, I'm no power lifter, but it makes sense. The more you practice something, the better you get at it. And these feats of strength, although not Olympic level worthy, they showcase a good understanding of all these modalities. I was a gymnast from the ages of five to 10. I was a wrestler from the ages of 14 to 21. I was introduced to weightlifting as a form of resistance when I was 21 and I do that until present day. And what I realized going through all these modalities is that the principles always remain the same. If you're training strength, you apply these specific principles. If you are training endurance, you apply these specific principles. If you're training power, you apply these specific principles. Doesn't matter what you're using, whether it's weight or body weight, it's actually the principles that matter the most. For example, if you're going to strength train and you're gonna perform a back squat, you need to be able to brace your stomach like if someone's gonna kick you and you need to be able to breathe through that. If you can't, then the bar's gonna come crashing down. And same thing with a body weight exercise, like a planche. If you're holding a planche, you need to be able to squeeze your stomach and breathe through that. If you can't, you're going to fall on your face. And same thing with other things like manual labor. You need to be able to squeeze your stomach and breathe through it as you load and unload bags of cement. Otherwise, you might hurt your back. It's much less about the tool being used and more about the goal being pursued. So I fully subscribe to something Nick Timonello says in one of his books. He says, if you want to master your body, train with body weight. And if you want to master your environment, train with external loads. And I absolutely love that because it goes hand in hand with the said principle, specific adaptations to impose demands, which basically just says that if you wanna get better at something, train that specific thing. So if you wanna get better at weightlifting, train weightlifting. And if you wanna get better at bodyweight training, train bodyweight training. So when selecting exercises, what I look for is multi-joint and multi-muscle usage. What that means is basically what it says. It's using multiple joints and multiple muscles. So for example, in the push-up, I'm using my wrist, elbow, and shoulder. And I'm also using my chest, shoulders, and triceps. Whereas in a tricep extension, I'm only using my elbow and I'm only using my tricep. So I'd rather use more muscles because science just shows that it's better for pretty much any goal, whether you wanna lose weight, you wanna gain weight, you want to build strength, you want to build power. The more muscles and the more joints utilized, the better it's gonna be and the more carryover you're gonna have. I'm also looking at range of motion. I want my exercises to have as much carryover into the real life as possible. So I want functionality and I want mobility. 
If we're doing an exercise that only has you doing partial reps, let's say partial rep chin-ups, you're only gonna get gains for partial reps, so you're missing out and all these other gains because the body is lazy and it'll adapt to what you train. Whereas if we train all the way up and all the way down, that's gonna help you a lot more for strength and mobility purposes because now you're taking your joints in their full range of motion. Lastly, I'm looking at how I can load the exercise. Because I want my training to be as time efficient as possible, I'm looking to see how I can make every second of the exercise as heavy as possible. Basically, your body doesn't know if it's lifting a weight or body weight. What your body understands is tension. And when tension is placed upon it, your body has to adapt. So the more tension, the more positive gains you'll get from it. So if we compare an overhead press to a handstand push-up, let's look at the three different markers that I look for, range of motion, multi-joints, and load. With the overhead press and the handstand push-up, they use the same joints. They use your shoulders, they use your elbows, they use your wrists. When it comes to muscles, same thing. It's very, very much the same pattern. It's a vertical pushing movement. Shoulders, chest, and triceps. When it comes to a range of motion, though, you're pretty much limited to the bar to your chest, or if you're using a dumbbell or a kettlebell, you're limited to hand to your chest. In the handstand push-up, I can go a little bit deeper, even to the point where my elbow starts extending. I can get so low that I can pull my hands back a bit further. So range of motion is better when using body weight. Now let's look at load, and this is probably the most surprising one. But in the overhead press, when I push up, oh, that's the hard part. But when I come down, that negative is actually pretty easy, at least compared to the way up. So in an overhead press, you're grinding on the way up. This is the hard part. On the way down, relatively easy. Whereas in the handstand push-up, I can make the negative and the positive extremely difficult. So if we take a look at the handstand push-up archer style, as I push up, I'm going to extend my elbows as best as I can. When I can no longer push, I'm going to control the movement and grab the straps with my feet lightly and help myself up as little as possible but as much as I need to, making every second excruciatingly difficult. And on the way down, this is typically easy. I could just slide my feet down and bend my elbows. But instead, I'm going to straighten one arm and lean towards the bent arm. And this is gonna load one arm a lot more, making every second just extremely difficult. So you're gonna see a lot more time efficiency and gains because you're essentially doubling the volume that you would in an overhead press. For lower body body weight exercises though, you can't necessarily apply this concept. And if you could, you have to get really weird, like a single leg sissy squat with your hand assisting you on a pole or the wall or a chair. And I don't think it's worth it to place your knee under that much stress. So what I would do instead is go back to the drawing board and look at those main bullet points. What's gonna give me multi-joint, multi-muscle exercises? What's gonna give me full range of motion and as much range of motion as possible? And what's gonna allow me to load it extremely heavy? And I ended up with the ATG split squat. I ended up choosing this when I wanted to work towards my middle split because the back leg looks exactly like the front split. So choosing the ATG split squat gave me gains in body weight. But before I started my middle split journey, I was able to do a pistol squat with 48 kilos. One year, fast forward one year, I was still able to do a pistol squat with 48 kilos. So it wasn't necessarily gaining on the pistol squat, but I was maintaining it, but I was making a lot of other gains. I was increasing my range of motion and I was really getting strong with that lunge pattern. That's pretty much been my entire life's journey in regards to training. When I was a gymnast, we would train with our body weight to master our bodies. 
and when I was in wrestling, we would train with kettlebells, so we got comfortable using weight so we can control other people's bodies in our environment. And when I was working towards something called the Tactical Strength Challenge, which is a combination of max pull-ups, max kettlebell snatches in five minutes, and max weight deadlift, I was using all three. No one said you could only use one. No one said it had to be one or the other. You can train body weight and you can train with weight depending on your goals and your preferences and your own individual situation. It's not like the UFC 20 years ago where you went discipline versus discipline, right? In the UFC back in the day, you had karate people going against jujitsu people and boxers going against wrestlers. And nowadays, MMA fighters are starting to realize that they need to become well-rounded to be a better competitor. Except we're not competing. You know, it's just a preference thing and what we're trying to accomplish. So you don't have to think one or the other. You can feel free to choose what you want to do. I personally like having the benefits of both. I like being able to do whatever the hell I want with my body, whether it's handstands, flips, or rock climbing. I like to be able to do those things. But I also want a bit more control over my environment. If, you know, a burglar breaks into my house, I want to be able to at least put up a fight and hold them down, uh, you know, while my wife and kids escape through the back door. Or if I have my wife and kids in a car and the car breaks down, I want to be able to have the strength to push the car out of the way so we're out of danger's way. So to summarize, I like using body weight for my upper body exercises. I feel I have more control so I can make every second of the exercise as difficult as possible. Whereas for lower body exercises, I like using weight. I feel body weight exercises for me at my level are a little too easy or weird, so I stick with weights. No one said you had to choose one or the other, so I like mixing both. And I'm very curious to hear what you do or if this video changed your mind about something. So if you have questions or concerns or ideas about things, please leave them in the comments. And if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna watch more videos like this one. Until next time.